I think for anyone to write on that level, he must be deeply troubled. I don't think anyone who's living a, a, a successful, happy life can write something like that. No, this man was... He was going through it, man. So, Dostoevsky, man. I appreciate it, dog. <laughs> completely normal that doesn't mean that you're a failure but i'm too strong eh, eh. i dust them off eh, eh. i'm too strong way too strong i dust them off yeah yeah so the time has come to discuss Fyodor Dostoevsky <laughs> great guy Dostoevsky uh slightly psychotic perhaps depressed um perhaps handling a, an existential crisis that was burdening his soul perhaps yeah I mean this is a dense book here and I don't think anyone would read this for fun because it, it definitely it wasn't fun it was enjoyable you know at certain points in the book it was enjoyable but it wasn't fun no one reads Dostoevsky because they want to have fun they read Dostoevsky because they want to hurt themselves because that's what it is it's, it's, it's literally putting yourself through voluntary suffering uh, <laughs> reading him and we, but we do it willingly and why because what he writes it deepens our soul it deepens our human spirit it deepens our understanding of the world um Dostoevsky he wasn't writing about simple concepts it's an intellectual book um I wouldn't suggest this for people you know who are just starting out reading don't dive into Dostoevsky you won't survive and even I myself, and, and I'm an avid reader, I, I felt like putting this down. Um, but I persisted and I got to the end, 600 pages long. Um, 600 pages of suffering and vile human behavior. And it really, this book here takes you to that part of yourself that makes you want to give up. Like that's the thing that Dostoevsky does so well is he will he flips humanity on its head, right? He questions human beings and he says, are you guys really as divine as you say you are? Are you? Or do you have you no know, deep and dark parts of yourself? Um, but before we get into all of that, let's first go into what is this book even about, right? The story is about a 23 year old law student. And I, I'm also a 23 year old law student. So that's why I had a very um, personal connection with the protagonist. But it's about a 23 year old law student who lives in very dire and poor conditions right he lives in practically in a, in a box no larger than a, a closet practically um you know he has very little to eat very little money he he's so poor and he's, he's struggling so much that uh, to, to pay for his college tuition that he was removed from the course right his parents his sister his family they're equally as poor and struggling and suffering just like everyone else in russia at the time so he can't depend on them yet his mother and sister will do whatever they can to to send him money and he feels just bad about that right he he feels bad that he's dependent on them even his sister is prepared to marry a man that she does not love at all just for the fact that he's rich and he has money so that she can try and send some more money to her poor brother Raskolnikov so that's his family structure but larger than that if you look at the environment itself it's a very sick environment often the characters that you come across are those who spend all day in the pub they're drinkers they're not really so they're not really thinkers right or intelligent or thoughtful but on the other hand this character is Raskolnikov he's a very deep thinker he's you know he he fills his day with nothing but thought he's always having these deep discussions in his head and he has no one else to turn to in society so this character he has no exemplary figures to to teach him how he should live his life really he feels very isolated and alone there isn't an example that he can pull from his environment to say you know what he's an example of someone who's actually achieved good things in life let me follow him let me follow in his footsteps there is no guidance for this young man and he's here he's drifting he's drifting between these islands of of very strong dogmatic thoughts and belief systems and then vacillating towards existentialism where none of those things matter and he's kind of shifting between those two worlds right and of course that's no way to live really 
um, and it's not a healthy way to live anyways. So now we've painted a picture of who the main character is. So the main character, he comes to the conclusion that there are two types of individuals. There are those who are above the law and set the law. And then there are those who uh, just follow the law, right? Those, there are those who comply. And he gives an example of Napoleon, right? The, the conqueror who, who was able to expand his territory and, and take other people's land at the cost of thousands and, you know, hundreds of thousands of lives, right? But yet society seemed to, you know, glorify this man rather than vilify him. So now Raskolnikov has, he has to test out his theory and he has to find out what he's made of, right? He wants to know, do I fit in category A? The, the individuals who uh, who stand above the law or am I in category B? You know, the individuals who just blindly follow along based upon their own moral precepts, which was basically indoctrinated into them, right? Uh, by by those in category A, <laughs> right? Because those in category A, category A are those who overstep uh, the moral uh, boundaries in order to uh, to move humanity forward or to evolve and then set the law for the others who, who, who just follow, right? The sheep. So Raskolnikov now has to, he has to test out his theory and, and see which, which one do I fall into, which category? Is he going to be someone who's going to be above the law and create his own laws and do whatever he wants? Or will he, um, you know, be a nice citizen, right? <laughs> so the way he tests out his theory is, <laughs> Quite, uh, quite funny enough, he, he decides to kill someone. He decides to kill someone and steal her money. And he, he comes to the conclusion that he wouldn't be doing anything wrong. Like, and, and that's the psychological thing about this book, right? Is the way that Dostoevsky words that, the way he even, he sets up that whole internal discussion where the main character justifies his behavior it even makes me myself as the reader say, you know what? He is kind of justified in that behavior. Now, of course, that's a dark place to go, right? That's a, um, no human being wants to say, yeah, I would kill someone. But that's the point that the, the main character gets to. He reasons that it's okay for me to kill this woman and take her money because one, I'll be taking myself out of poverty so that I'll actually be able to help myself, uh, help my mom, help my sister, you know? Uh, the person he decides to kill, she's not liked particularly by her community. So Raskolnikov was like, you know, I'd be doing the world a service by getting rid of her because she's not really serving humanity anyways. So he decides to kill her. But only after killing her, he realizes, you know what? Perhaps being in category A is not that nice. It doesn't sit well in my soul. But he's already done the thing. He's already gone and killed the woman and he's got the money. And then the rest of the book is basically this um, this internal discussion that he has after killing this woman. And it, it goes very deeply into all of that. The emotions, the thoughts, the internal suffering, um, the battle for his soul, all of those things. I think the central question that he was trying to answer in this book was, if the moral and metaphysical presuppositions that we have about each individual member of society, you know, the idea that they are uh, by nature divine. If those presuppositions were to collapse, what would happen to society at large? What would happen to the individual? Um, a serious question, right? Because, you know, I think Western society is kind of uh, governed by these natural laws, these moral laws, which we respect, right? The idea that, that there's a divine connection between human beings. We aren't just uh, soulless matter, right? There are these, these natural laws which everyone should respect, even if it's not codified, right? But what if that was to collapse in society? What if society no longer held that belief system that human beings were naturally divine? What if we were to take that away? What would happen to the individual? How would he behave in society? How would he behave towards his towards his fellow man, right? And, and and that's what Dostoevsky was really troubled with because what I sensed was he was he was confronted with a reality where we say we respect these things and we respect these moral codes and moral laws, 
But then our own governors and people, they do the exact opposite. People are vile creatures. They're power hungry. You know, they don't respect human life. They don't respect human beings. So the governors, for instance, they can say, yeah, respect thy neighbor, but then go off to a different country and go bum it, right? Do they operate, uh, you know, based on a moral code, moral law, or are they above that? And that's what the central character in this book uh, tries to question. He says, wait, hold up. I guess it's kind of slick. Our conquerors, they give us the workers right the the lower class those who are scrapping for our own existence practically they give us a moral code and a book which says follow these moral codes because this is what your god says uh you should do and you should listen to this book and follow it religiously no matter what happens we will continue to shit on you we will continue to make society worse we will continue to make your life more difficult but you trust in this book no matter what you see outside you trust in this book and yeah we'll continue to conquer we'll continue to uh expand our reign our power we'll continue to do that over the uh, you know the dominions but you trust in that book <laughs> right so that's what the main character was kind of dealing with is saying all right cool our conquerors they don't comply to no moral law or metaphysical law they will kill hundreds of people in order to get what they want you know to have a new a new law passed they don't care how many human lives they sacrifice he observed that on many levels and hierarchies of society from from the governors all the way down to the proletariat right to the to the common man so i feel like i'm going all over the place but that's the central theme of what this book is it's, it's basically that discussion being had and now we take a little break i wake up every single day i am who i say i am and i get what i get because i live in beast mode stop being gazelle you're not average you're not even good you were born to be great we keep it burning Cool. Back in this. I think Dostoevsky was desperate, desperately trying to cling on to a moral and transcendental idealistic belief for mankind. But the reality that he was presented with on a day to day basis was constantly attacking that. There was no way for him to escape the degradation um, that he was seeing around him. There was no way for him to escape it because he was in the thick of it. He was seeing poverty on a daily basis. He was seeing just terrible environmental conditions. He was seeing, um, and you know, and human beings are the product of their environment. So as much as we try to hold on to these belief systems, they're presented with a world which will most definitely counter that. So, you know, in my opinion, it's, it's a great book. Um, but only only read it if you have the discipline to actually stick with it. It's um, it's not an easy book. It's a challenging book. It challenges you not just on the intellectual level of actually reading through this because it's written in very um, um, in very nice prose, very nice language. But it's, it can be very uh, difficult to follow at times. But if you want to stick around for a a book that will um, really touch you, right? then this is definitely a book to to, to read um i feel like people you know it took me months to read it took me i think two going on three months to complete this book um and yeah it, it was drudgery it was it was hard work at points but there were several points in this book where my soul was deeply touched right a deep part of myself was genuinely moved right um and I suppose it takes good writing to reach and penetrate into those parts of yourself. I'm not exaggerating when I say Dostoevsky, if there was, if we're talking about writers and we're talking about God level <laughs> and then just, you know, great writers, God level, um, you know, decent, below average, terrible. Dostoevsky is at God level. The, why, why do I say that? He's at God level because the way he's able to weave in all of these very complex themes 
while still being detached from these themes that takes a level of um that takes a level of introspection and uh, and, and cultivation right to not be attached to any one school of belief you know he the way he he debates himself in this book and he creates um characters to challenge the protagonist but he also tries to make the protagonist look reasonable and justifiable the way he he plays with all of that is is god level it takes it takes more than a single lifetime uh to acquire that depth to your soul i will probably read this again perhaps not now maybe 30s 40s maybe i just feel happy holding this it, like it takes me back somewhere somewhere nice familiar <laughs> doc <laughs> but great book um what dostoevsky achieves with this book as well is he gets us to to enter into the mind of a killer which is very interesting because you know we tend to look at ourselves as you know always as moral beings as, as angelic and always correct and right he pulls us into the lowest ranks of human behavior which would be to kill someone he, he makes us identify with the killer he makes us put ourselves in in that killer's shoes and um you know i i emerged out of this experience with a, a deeper understanding of myself and my boundaries and my internal belief systems um, i came out of this almost triumphantly feeling like yes i've i've reach some enlightenment because that's all we that's what we do with books is is we read this to get the author's experience to see what he was dealing with what his thoughts were and to, then to allow that to guide us because we're all searching for the light is it a religious book there are religious themes philosophical themes yes yeah, it's, it's essentially a, a book on psychology philosophy and theology I'd say yeah there are some 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 theological themes in this do I recommend it look I know see, see here's the thing I'm not gonna say I recommend it to anyone because I can recommend it and then you're gonna come back to me like yo Kev bro this book is, is whack like what is this so I don't want you to come back to me and attack me for saying look I spent 10 pounds on this book and I didn't like it just don't read it unless your your soul is being called to it it's a very psychological book. It's a very intense book, but I'm an intense person. Isn't it? Like I was probably, you know, some nights I was up at three reading this. Some mornings I was up at six reading this. There were certain days when I read this with practically no sleep. Um, so it was a very personal relationship I had with this book. You know, at some points I, I couldn't read it and I would leave it for like two weeks and then come back to it. Um, this isn't a book that you can rush. I feel like in the readers community, we try to, um, there's, I mean, I think it's just culture in general. Everyone, everyone wants to finish a book in a week now, or they want to finish a book in a month, and they set these goals. And it's just like, you have to take your time with art, man. Think about how long it took for this guy to write this. It's 600 pages long. 600 pages of good writing. It's a journey, right? Go through this book if you, if if you're brave enough. The 600 pages. Who has time for that nowadays, right? Reading is is such a luxury. So if you stuck around until this point, thank you so much. If you're into literature and you haven't yet picked up Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment, then definitely go ahead and be prepared for a wild journey. Faculty X training, and I'm out. Peace. If you're looking to purchase some books, then you can go on Instagram to Kevlar's Bookshop. I'll leave the link uh, in the description. This week we are selling Scientific Knowledge and Its Social Problems by J.R. Ravitz. We have a, a, a wide collection of books, different uh, paperbacks, hardbacks, antique books, uh, fiction, non-fiction. So go check that out and see you guys next time.